Well, I greet you in the most wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, we are going to read from John chapter 9 because we are in day 9 of lockdown. As I read from the chapter, I want you to see that the chapter is really about a man that is sick. And the question that is asked, is he sick because he was sinful? And we're going to see answers for that given from Jesus, from the Pharisees, and then from Jesus about the Pharisees. I'm going to read from God's Word. I'm going to make some observations from God's Word. I'm going to apply God's Word, and then I'm going to close in a word of prayer. Let's read together from John chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. As he was passing by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus answered. This came about so that God's works might be displayed in him. We must do the works of him who sent me while it is still day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After he said these things, he spit on the ground, made some mud from the saliva, and spread the mud on his eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he left, washed, and came back seeing. His neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit begging? Some said, He is the one. Others were saying, Nobody looks like him. And he kept on saying, I am the one. So they asked him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and told me, Go to Siloam and wash. So when I went and washed, I received my sight. Where is he? they asked. I don't know, he said. They brought the man who used to be blind to the Pharisees. The day that Jesus made mud and opened his eyes was a Sabbath. Then the Pharisees asked him again how he received his sight. He put mud in my eyes, he told them. I washed and I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he doesn't keep the Sabbath. But others were saying, How can a sinful man perform such signs? And there was division among them. Again they asked the blind man, What do you say about him since he opened your eyes? He's a prophet, he said. The Jews did not believe this about him, that he was blind and received sight, until they summoned the parents of the one who had received his sight. They asked them, Is this your son, the one who you say was born blind? How then does he see now? We know this is our son, and that he was born blind, his parents answered, but we don't know how he now sees, and we don't know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he's of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things because they were afraid of the Jews, since the Jews had already agreed that if anyone confessed him as the Messiah, he would be banned from the synagogue. This is why his parents said, He is of age, ask him. So a second time they summoned the man who had been blind and told him, Give glory to God, we know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether or not he is a sinner, I don't know. One thing I do know, I was blind and now I can see. Then they asked him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I really told you, he said, and you didn't listen. Why do you want to hear it again? You don't want to become his disciples too, do you? They ridiculed him. You're that man's disciples, but we're Moses' disciples. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but this man, we don't know where he is from. This is an amazing thing, the man told them. You don't know where he is from, and yet he opened my eyes? We know that God doesn't listen to sinners, but if anyone is God-fearing and does His will, He listens to Him. Throughout history, no one has ever heard of someone opening the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he wouldn't be able to do anything. You were born entirely in sin, they replied, and are you not trying to teach us? And then they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown the man out, and He found him. He asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir, that I might believe in him? He asked. Jesus answered, You have seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. I believe, Lord, he said, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, in order that those who do not see will see, and those who do see will become blind. 
Some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these things and asked him, We aren't blind too, are we? If you were blind, Jesus told them, you wouldn't have sin. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. Just so far in the reading of God's word. Are people sick because they sin? Well, the truth is the answer to that question is complex. Because at times in God's word, it is revealed that they are. But at other times, such as this instance, we read something different. Uh, the opening of the chapter uh, in verse 1 reads, Rabbi, or verse 2 reads, Rabbi, who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind. Uh, Jesus' answer is that this came about so that God's work might be displayed in him. And he explicitly says, neither this man nor his parents sinned. Uh, the reality, though, is that even after this man is healed, even after his sight is restored, the, the Pharisees are incest with Jesus Christ because the healing happened on a Sabbath. Uh, he broke one of their rules. And so they bring the man before them and they're going through the same kind of trial to figure out if Jesus is a sinner, if this man is a sinner and what's going on. Their verdict on this man stands in stark contrast to Jesus Christ's verdict. They say in Acts chapter 9 verse 34, you were born entirely in sin. And they then accuse that he is trying to teach them. And they throw him out. They throw him out to the synagogue. This man effectively comes under the discipline of the assembly. Well, now we have Jesus saying that this man is not sinful, but he is sick so that God's glory might be revealed in him. We, we have the Pharisees saying that this man is born entirely in sin and they throwing him out of this, the assembly, the gathering. And now we have Jesus Christ pronouncing a verdict on the Pharisees that have thrown this man out. Right at the end of the chapter, we read in verse 39, I came into this world for judgment in order that those who do not see will see, and those who do see will become blind. The truth is, Jesus Christ is laying the verdict down in front of the Pharisees. This man who did not see has been healed and he has become seen. These Pharisees who claim to have sight are in actual fact blind leaders leading the blind. How do we go about applying chapter 9 into our lives. If you are an unbeliever and you are listening uh, to this chapter this morning, then I want you to hear in Acts chapter 9 verse 35, Jesus, when he had heard that they had thrown the man out, went and found him. And he asks him, do you believe in the Son of Man? Friend, this is very important. Jesus' primary mission wasn't to come and lead a miracle campaign so that people could be healed of sickness and disease. Jesus Christ's primary concern was to come and seek and save the lost. This man was lost and although his sight has been restored, he still did not have salvation. And so Jesus Christ finds him and presents him with the question, do you believe in the Son of Man? And gives him the opportunity to respond. I'm reminded of Paul's words in 1 Timothy chapter 1, where Paul says, this saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's Jesus Christ's mission, to save sinners. And he died that you might be saved. He died uh, giving up his body as a substitute for your sin, that the wrath of God might be appeased in him. He rose again in celebration, defeating death, defeating this world, defeating the evil one. And the call on your life this morning is to repent, to cast yourself upon Jesus Christ, to trust in him and to believe that you might be saved. If you are a seeker, and you are hearing chapter 9 this morning, if you are looking for God, I really want you to find God in the person of Jesus Christ. And I want you to see that Jesus Christ is God. We've seen that in the previous eight chapters and that he is worthy of our worship in a way which is exclusively reserved for God. We see the response of the man in chapter 9 verse 37. Jesus answers, 
If you have seen him, in fact, he is the one who's speaking to you, speaking of the Son of Man. And the man's response is, I believe, Lord, he said. And he worshipped him. And he worshipped him. Friend, if you are seeking for God, find him in the person of Jesus Christ and worship him both now and then into eternity to come. If you're a new convert this morning, I want you to see something of testimony in this man's life, uh, something of the way that he presents Jesus Christ to a watching world, even before he really understands the full implications of what he is professing. In Acts chapter 9 verse 25, we read that he answered, whether or not he is a sinner, I don't know. The one thing I do know, I was blind and now I can see. Friends, when you are called upon to give your testimony to a watching world, whether that be your family or your friends or your co-workers or people that you come into contact with, testify to the things that you know that you know that you know. Talk about your life before you were saved, how you were a wretch in need of salvation. Talk about the point of salvation when you heard the gospel message. Talk about the gospel message itself, that Jesus Christ died for your sins and that he rose from the grave and that you were called upon to repent for the forgiveness of sins. Talk about your life after salvation, how God has given you fruit uh, as you have lived out your, your salvation in fear and trembling, that God might be glorified in your testimony. Testify to the things that you know that God might be glorified in your life. Finally, to believers, uh, there's so much evangelism that we can learn in this text and in the whole of John's gospel. But particularly, I want to point you this morning to John chapter 9, verse 4, where Jesus says, We must do the works of him who sent me while it is still day. I'm reminded of Christ's words to his disciples by that Samaritan woman at the well when he told him to look up because the fields were white with harvest. Well, in chapter 9, we are reminded that it is still day. There is still time for us to do this great work of evangelizing the lost, of making known who Jesus Christ is, what he came to do, why we have such joy and hope in him. And this we must do to the watching world, our family, our friends, our co-workers, that Jesus Christ might be glorified in their lives, even as he will be glorified forever and ever in the age to come. Let's close in a word of prayer. Father God, even as we thank you for this chapter, uh, this chapter which talks about blindness and seeing, we give you much thanks and praise that we are seeing, that you have opened our eyes and we have beheld Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. Father God, I do ask that you would open the eyes of any who might be blind that are listening to this devotional today, that they might see Jesus Christ and live. And for the rest of us, Lord God, that we might be excited to take the gospel message into a world which is in darkness and without him. And this I pray in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And may God richly bless you this day. Amen.